live. Yeah. Exciting. Yes. Wow. I am excited about today's show. As I told you before, I love the new shiny, you know, maybe breaking demo bits. I'm, I'm <laughs> it's, it's all fun. So I think um, Justin so, told me, Justin told me on the way over, he was like, there's a bug in my code. I really hope I don't yeah. hit it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, object dispose exception. Or no, the object was already garbage collected. I'm like, oh, you know what? It's a prototype for a reason. Yeah. Okay, so so both of you have been on the show, but it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Can you introduce yourselves? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I'm Andrew Stanton Nurse. I'm an engineering manager on ASP.NET Core. Uh, I've been on a couple times to talk about SignalR, some other things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, my name is Justin. I've been on the ASP.NET Core team for around two years now, two years and some change. And I primarily work on like Kestrel, IS, NCM, um, and now some HTTP3 stuff, which is pretty awesome. You um, were on the stand up once before. Yeah, right? I was on the stand up. Three years ago, when I was an intern, um, I talked about URL rewrite, the middleware I wrote as an intern, and hey, we shipped it, so it's not, it couldn't be that bad. <laughs> anyway, You know, it's, it's, URL rewrite's great. It's, it's one of those things where we need it, you need it to work well, and, and I've had it save the day for me several times. Yeah. So. Like, one story I remember hearing was, I think Hanselman was talking about how he had a URL rewrite file as part of IS, and he was like, I'm reporting my site to Linux. Like, I can't use these URL rewrite rules with IS at all. And he just brought the file in, called, you like, use URL, use rewriter, and pass the file in with the IS rules, and it actually just all worked, which was, it was a sigh relief. It was like, oh, yes, we actually wrote a feature that, like, worked without these bugs, which is awesome. Yep. Cool. Um, all right, let's jump right over to our community links for the week. All right. Let's find my screen. We're set here. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. Awesome. I'm starting right off the bat with a Turkish post. I hope you're ready for reading some Turkish or I'll translate to English <laughs> if needed. So uh, we are trying to do this every week. We want to feature at least one uh, non-English post. And fortunately, there's a ton of great content out there. So Emre is writing about content security policy for .NET Core MVC projects. Um, and so there's different ways to handle this. There are some, some libraries out there that will handle this for you. There's one NWSEC. There's, uh, I think we featured a post from Anthony Chu a while ago. Uh, people have written tag helpers. Uh, Tomas uh, did something on that a while ago. But this, this, is, uh, this is, you know, a nice walkthrough. This is writing the code kind of from scratch. It's explaining why you need content security policy and uh, so, I always feel dumb when I say this. Is it, I think it's nonce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say, nonce. Yeah, I say nonce. Okay. All right, we're agreed it's nonce. So, so you need – this is basically like a hash, right? This is a uh, generated um, – it's a one-time value. And so uh, an attacker is not going to be able to create that value each time. Mm -hmm. um, so here he goes through and uses the RNG crypto service provider and shows writing that out. Um, explaining, you know, what what it's valuable for, and um, so that's that's pretty much it. And then uh, showing if you if you don't have, you'll you'll get an error, which is what you want to see. So, cool. so nice, well done, Emery. All right, so here is a uh, repeat offender on mm. the community stand up, Andrew Locke. So he's going through a series on .NET Core three. And this is writing about local tools. So we've had global tools for a while. And an issue into with global tools is if you're collaborating with someone at a um, you know, repo where you're sharing code and your project is relying on a global tool, then you kind of you need to tell people, hey, you need to go get this tool or whatever. So with .NET Core 3, we have support for local tools. Uh, that includes uh, you can create a tool manifest. Then, uh, Going through, you can install. So here he shows installing Cake, and then for your for people that join, uh, you know, that are using your project, then then they will. Um, I may have scrolled by it too quickly. You you can basically you can say, uh, here it is. Here's the exciting part. So .NET Store, and that'll pull in local tools. You can just run if if you had your own version, or or this will show you this. Uh, allows support for specific versions. Um, so that, that's, you know, pretty straightforward, I think. And and it's nice to be able to to have that so that you can take an investment in a 
global tool from within a specific project. Cool, yeah, and I think that also allows you to do things like have different versions in different folders, which is really uh, useful with local. Uh, yeah. Because like when yeah. you've got a global tool that's doing something like, say, generating code, or it's like a key part of your build system, uh, there wasn't really a way to A, make that so that when you restore, they just appear, and B, manage the fact that, well, what if you're switching branches? What if you're switching projects all the time? So yeah, cool little Got feature. it, got it. Okay, yep, I had about the versioning. That, that... Um, which tool wins first? Is it local or I global? think the local wins first. If okay. you've got a local tool installed and you've also got it installed globally, I think it prefers okay. the local. That makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, just a question from the identity server folks uh, so they Dominic announcing that the 3.0 version is out support for .NET 3 SDK um, and some other nice new features so that is cool yeah we are uh, yeah yep. all right this is one that I thought was pretty cool um, so Ankit uh, it is Hacktoberfest and I got a, um, a chat asking you know hey or, or actually got a pull request updating the .NET Foundation website. We were previously on .NET Core 2.1, and so I got a, a pull request from him saying, hey, I updated you to 2.2. And me being, uh, you know, always wanting more, I said, great, how about 3? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but actually, Ankit went through and not only, did, you know, sent me a great pull request, I was able to, to you know, merge it, and it worked just great. Um, so this live in production now, but also uh, he went through and wrote up a, a blog post explaining, you know, step by step what he did, all the changes along the way. So uh, I've done this recently. I did on a Twitch stream last week where I updated a site to .NET Core th or ASP.NET Core 3 and just going through the docs, I felt like the docs were pretty straightforward. So this this felt pretty familiar to me. Um, but the, so just uh, the, the steps on uh, your packages, uh, the change from iHosting reference, iWeb host, or iHosting environment to iHost web host environment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't say that more than once fast. Yeah, mouthful, yeah. Yeah, and then of course uh, changing uh, endpoint routing. Oh, which is very cool. So, mm -hmm. and then and then also getting rid of the compati compatibility version uh, for two two. Now, question on this: I remember when. Uh, Compatibility version came out, and that was a thing that allowed for, you know, like um, some things that would have been breaking changes and uh, allows you to kind of select your behavior. There were none of those that really applied in .NET Core 3. Is that kind of a as needed, like this compatibility version thing, or, or any, any thoughts on that? Well, so I expect. I'm going to speak relatively underinformed about this because <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, entirely familiar with it but i believe it's one of those things we, that we do between major versions more to allow you to um opt in and out of new functionality added in to basically there's a lot of stuff going on in the guts of mvc that we want to adjust and we we do that in ways that we believe are non-breaking but sometimes you know some edge case comes up and so the, that's designed as a as a way to uh, let you say, okay, I upgraded to 2.2, but my site needs me to roll back to the 2.1 behavior for these MVC specific settings. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we do it in 3.0. The idea is in 3.0, you're sort of re-anchoring on, on the, the current major version. Um, but I would double check with someone yeah. like Damien or, or something about yeah, that, because I'm not 100% on that. I'm not certain if for 3.1 if we're going to do it as well. Yeah. So just because, oh. yeah. So there's my completely non-authoritative mm -hmm. answer. <laughs> Yeah, I would awesome. also say like at this point you should be upgrading to three zero instead of upgrading to two two because um, well yeah two two is yeah. gonna be end of life and, and three one soon yeah. so because yeah. uh, that's gonna be the LTS version because yeah. three zero is not a uh, long term support but three one is gonna be the yeah. long term but support. the upgrade from three zero to three one should be pretty mild nothing yeah if, hopefully nothing if yeah. we if it's more than something then we. Yeah. Up yeah. No, it'll be a pretty smooth uh, transition we're looking at there because three one is really about those kind of refinements to make it ready for three years of long term support. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Uh, so this is nice. This is from Bradley. He's using SQL Mister PWA uh, build uh, MS build task um, and, and uh, or package. Um, so just. Show walk through this is this is doing the PWA magic creating a manifest JSON and service 
So here he walks through, he's got a calculator application, uh, setting it up with the things, you know, like icons and cache. And actually pretty straightforward. There's not there's not a huge amount of code in here. Um, you know, some general kind of styling and stuff, but uh, pretty quick walkthrough. So this this is nice to see there. Cool. Yeah, how, and you know, something like Blazor uh, makes sense, you know, I think in a lot of cases to, to do a PWA, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, so this is, um, let me see. Uh, oh, okay, so Cheng Hui, hopefully I'm saying that kind of right. This is interesting. Uh, I saw a discussion on Heroku today, and this is neat on using uh, GitHub Actions to deploy ASP.NET Core to Heroku. So it's um, you're able to containerize, and uh, you know that works really well with GitHub Actions, a whole kind of um, workflow there. So here, uh, I'm not at all a, a Heroku expert, but this was relatively easy to follow. Um, so, you know, going through setting up all the, the Dockerizing, um, so the Docker build, then going through and creating the Heroku app. This was the part that was kind of new to me. I haven't looked at Heroku for a bit. Um, so, uh, you know, creating the Heroku application uh, and then just, you know, building that in through the workflow, the GitHub workflow to actually deploy that out. So, yeah, pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, and nice I to have as an option. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, last link for me to share. Uh, so this is exciting. ABP uh, announcing a 1.0 release. Um, so th this is uh, ABP. This they, this has been a long time building to this release. It's, as they say here, three years of continuous deployment. So uh, 5,900 commits. Um, so there's a lot. This uh, ABP uh, project uh, we've featured them in the past before. There's a lot of uh, stuff for all kinds of uh, uh, stuff, Mo uh, modularity, multi-tenancy, um, you know, so a real kind of a, a boilerplate sort of application. Um, and so quite a bit to dig through. So congratulations to the team for the nice big, big one. And that is it for my links and I as always will be sharing these out uh, in the all, all the places on the the notes and the in the chats and uh, mm -hmm. oh, yep cool. and I I am about done talking I am excited to see some yeah. cool exciting John do you uh, do you know what uh, ABP stands for <laughs> I wasn't so saying. yeah I think I thought it originally stood for ASP.NET boilerplate Mm -hmm. um, but I think they've rebranded it over time, um, and so I think they've gone to just ABP. I think that there was more than one project uh, that had a similar kind of name, and so that I think that was part of it. And so, yeah, it's kind of interesting those like acronym names that yeah. then they just decide to drop the acronym but keep the name. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, like for example, and or they rebrand a little bit. I know GRPC was. Google RPC, yeah. but now it GRPC stands for GRPC Remote Procedure Call. <laughs> yeah. So the G in GRPC stands for GRPC. Yeah. Uh, it's nice. the classic recursive algorithm, uh, you know, acronym. Um, yeah, yeah uh, another another interesting version of that is the Quick UDP Internet Connections or mm -hmm. QUIC, mm -hmm. which is Quick, which is a, a new transport protocol that we're going to talk about very yeah. soon, which the the recent specs, they changed it to say Quick is just a name. It's just a name. It doesn't yeah. stand for anything uh, anymore. But I think originally it stood for something like that, Quick UDP Internet yeah. Connections. And on that yeah. subject, yeah. <laughs> well, so so I, I did get in the chat. So Riyadh is saying that a, ABP, uh, it's a complete rebuild of ASP.NET right. boilerplate. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, right. um, so 3.0, .NET Core 3.0 shipped pretty recently. And in that, one of the big pieces of news, HTTP2, full support, on by default. But we are not resting there. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about some prototype work we're doing. at, and, and the plan is to ship this in a future release. We don't know exactly when yet. Um, but we're looking into HTTP3, which is the next version of HTTP. Turns out there's already an HTTP3 out there. Um, and uh, HTTP3 is uh, sort of a new version of HTTP built on top of QUIC. That's Q-U-I-C. And let me actually here, let me throw over to my screen a little bit. Um, QUIC is, this is the, the QUIC website. QUIC is a new 
sort of low level transport protocol. So think quick replaces TCP at that level. Um, so it's a way of sending reliable messages back and forth. Um, and then on top of quick, you can run HTTP, and that's what they call HTTP3. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Justin's got a little bit of content to go through to yeah. talk a little bit about where we're going. Mm -hmm. um, but basically what this comes to is we want to get out and get started running with HTTP3 and start playing around with it and even start sharing it um, because we don't know exactly how much work there is. We're still sort of figuring that out. Mm -hmm. but, um, but what we do know is that people are starting to use it. Cloudflare just uh, announced recently that they were yep. supporting HTTP3 everywhere. So we want to yep. sort of yeah. share with you what we've been working on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, many other companies, Google, Facebook, have all been kind of looking into um, quick support. So I'm going to give, uh, again, I'm Justin. I'm going to give a very brief overview of what we're going to be, what our current plans are with uh, .NET and then HTTP3 and quick support. So yeah, so first pretty clear question is why the heck do we need another version of HTTP? So we implemented HTTP2, that was, the spec was pretty much done around 2015, 2016, and it introduced many, many cool things over HTTP 1.1. Uh, um, it introduced multiplexing, being able to you know, have multiple streams and connections, um, being able to have multiple streams go at the same time that represent HTTP requests. Um, it introduced flow control and header compression as well in order to just speed up the protocol itself. But fundamentally, HTTP 2 has a few problems. The, the first one is really that when you are doing the streaming and connection, these are all still happening at the application layer. So what happens is when you get something called head of line blocking in with the TCP layer. So what head of line blocking is, if you have like, let's say five people waiting in line um, and the first one is taking forever, all four behind it are blocked effectively. So in HTTP one, you can have multiple requests going on the same connection, and if the first one was taking a while, all of the ones behind it were blocked. Right, because in HTTP 1, you had one TCP connection, and you sent one HTTP message, and mm -hmm. you had to wait, it had to process that before it could process the next yep, one. exactly. But in HTTP 2, you're still on that one TCP connection, mm -hmm. but now you can send a bunch of different parallel requests. Exactly, so right. up on the application layer, you have a bunch of parallelism, but the problem is, is that Still at the TCP layer, if you lose a packet for whatever reason, all of the other packets cannot be processed because TCP is reliable and in order transport. So you have to wait. And that is kind of a fundamental problem. And HTTP3 does address this by using UDP and with Quick. Right. So let's quickly, oh my gosh, I'm going to hate myself if I say too many puns, um, quickly, <laughs> quickly go over UDP quickly. or Quick. Um, so, first off, Quick is a UDP based protocol. Um, it is I have a little diagram in the top right. Um, effectively, what we have is HTTP2, you have this different network stack, the TLS and TCP. So for example, in Kestrel, this would look like you have a socket and you're reading TCP from it. These TCP packets eventually go through SSL stream. And then SSL, after SSL stream, you're eventually in Kestrel and you're parsing and processing these frames. Um, with HTTP3, this changes a lot. Um, all of that stuff with TLS and everything like that is now inside the quick layer. So effectively, you're going to be reading from a socket. You're going to be getting UDP packets. And then all the stuff that normally would happen is all processed by quick. And I saw someone post a comment uh, on the chat that, oh, UDP isn't that unreliable. Yeah. Right. And so that's where quick comes in. Yep. So quick effectively implements reliable transport, uh, data transfer, and also in order um, within a, a given stream. So it effectively re implements TCP. Um, which is a lot of work. Um, and that's the reason why, again, not many people have tried to implement Quick. Um, it's a very hefty spec, to say the least. Um, we can show the spec later, but it's just massive. Um, yeah. And, then, and I think the, the thing that's different there about what TCP does is where TCP does reliability as well. Messages come in. If you get a message out of order, it blocks and waits for the message to come in. They're all like, there's retransmission. The mm -hmm. client will keep resending if you haven't acknowledged, things like that. But it's all on that one big connection pipe. Mm -hmm. What Quick does is re-implement all that, but instead of one big connection pipe, there are as a practically infinite number of mm -hmm. streams, and you can just create new streams as you need to. Yeah. So um, even if you lose one packet for a given stream, all other streams can still be processed at the same time. That's the big thing. So right. if you do lose a packet for a given stream, that's that's individual stream will be blocked, but all of the other ones will allow it to be, will, will be able to be processed at the same right. time. Um, yeah, it's also very analogous to what HTTP2 did with connections and streams. So HTTP2, you have these, like you have an HTTP2 connection and you have streams on top of that. 
Effectively, the same thing happens in the quick layer. You have a quick connection, and then you have quick streams on top of that as well. Um, quick also introduces some ideas of quicker round trip times. So normally, when you are negotiating or setting up a connection, you have a lot of like handshaking and a lot yeah. of back and forth between the client and the server. Um, quick makes a couple things really quick. With God, I cannot. <laughs> that that pun is too easy. Lot, no. <laughs> quick does a lot of things to improve this experience. Um, I I'm not quite sure how it happens at the protocol layer. Do you yeah. Know like? Um, I, I mean, I I have not read that protocol yeah. spec in depth either, but yeah. yeah, it's about reducing those round trip times for yeah. negotiation. Because because in in TCP and with TLS and all these, you've got you got to do a TCP handshake and you've got to do TLS negotiation to figure out like okay, what certificate are we using? What keys are we using? Mm -hmm. Quick does a lot to try and roll those all into one set of handshakes and also mm -hmm. reduce the the time it takes. Yeah. And so with that, quick one of the biggest appeals of it is the amount of time it takes to set up a secure connection. Um, I remember seeing some data about it being a, a few orders of magnitude faster than setting up a normal TCP connection, which is nice. Um, another thing about Quick, kind of implied by that, is that Quick is always secure. Um, TLS 1.3 is required by the spec. I'm not sure if technically TLS 1.3 is required, but I think there's a lot of stuff in TLS 1.3 that improves the connection negotiation speed. Um, I'm not, again, I saw somewhere it may not be required, but like, by the spec is required. Yeah, so. you, you have to use at least TLS 1.3, yeah. and they reserve the right to change it in future versions and do yeah, all that kind of stuff. Of yeah. But yeah, that's just a general overview of Quick. Cool. All right. Now, once you have Quick, you can implement HTTP 3. Um, and effectively, it's just a brand new way of sending HTTP over the wire. Um, it's a binary protocol just like HTTP 2, but there's some small differences between how um, the frame types and the protocol and all that stuff that's fairly minor, but there's a lot of similarities between HTTP 3 and HTTP 2, but it also has some HTTP 1 elements in there. It's, it's just an interesting mix. Um, now that streams and connections are handled by the transport, you don't have to worry about flow control or handling stream IDs and, or anything in frames. Um, it becomes a lot easier to implement at the application layer. So they basically had to re they got to remove all that stuff from HTTP2 because exactly. Quick has that. Yeah, now. exactly. So it ends up being a lot more like you have a single request and you don't need to worry about a bunch of like multiplexing at all because all of that's handled at the t or at the Quick layer, which is nice. Um, one other thing that was really nice about HTTP2 is uh, something called HPAC. Effectively, it's header compression. Um, it allowed you to have like references to a static and dynamic table. Um, it allowed you to compress your headers into really small values for common headers and also like for uh, if you have like a request and you want to be able to save headers on the server to be used within other requests, you can do that as well. It's like if you have to send the content type header, you're not sending those characters every time you're yeah. spend, sending like 42. Yeah, it's just a reference. Header number 42 is yep. that. And so it ends up being really efficient with that. Yeah. Um, there was a couple reasons why they needed to, to make a new one called QPAC um, instead of HPAC. They couldn't reuse it. I believe fundamentally is because with HTTP2, all of the headers were coming on the same connection. And so I think they didn't need to worry about like concurrent headers because yeah. now the headers are being sent on streams. That I think had to make a change to the protocol. Yeah, HTTP2 made a little, a few concessions to the fact that like it allows you to interleave things so that what you can have data coming in from one big giant upload while other requests are going on, for example. But it made some limitations that certain things have to happen completely before anyone any other request can be yeah. processed and um, because quick is all about splitting that down to streams letting you have a lot of different parallel streams is this multi-threaded tcp i think is one of the comments i saw mm -hmm. in the chat it's like it's it's an interesting like little little uh, way mm -hmm. of looking at it um uh, Q, they had to rewrite that that logic yeah. and, and change it and that's what qpac so sort of represents it's very similar to hpac with just some changes and because they're cha making changes they made a ton of good changes to the static table i remember the static table on hp2 only had like 30 entries or something yeah. like that and now they have like 100 which is really nice cuz there's a lot of common headers out there um, yeah. and also just as uh, you think about it of internet traffic that goes on and we're constantly sending the same strings yeah. over and over ridiculous you know <laughs> yeah 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 for sure um and just a quick shout out to a website i've been using it's uh i john is there gonna be a way to for me to share a bunch of links after this potentially yeah send them to me and i'll add them into the community links. awesome that'd be great so this is a, a nice community link i forget who wrote this but um it pretty much gives you a quick uh, gosh i cannot use the word quick <laughs> uh, um it gives a nice explanation of uh hb3 um why they're wanting to do it over uh, HTTP2, what problems it has, what 
is the yeah what's the the benefits of it and a bunch of other things about it so just a quick shout out to this um all right uh also mentioning that so you can do http3 over quick but quick is effectively just a way to transfer bytes between a client and a server and vice versa so there's been a lot of talk about doing non http workloads over quick um one i know it's been talked about is grpc i know it's been Kind of briefly mentioned on the repo or the grpc repo i'm not 100 certain if like, that's going to be something that's happening sooner than later um there's a lot of questions about if the quick the current quick spec is actually viable to use for non-http workloads i know that they're talking about a quick v2 so that also may be something but another thing we try to play around with is signalr and i'll eventually show a demo of signalr using quick which is pretty sweet yeah and so this is signalr running directly on quick with no http yeah exactly um, and then finally, uh, DNS. Uh, there was some talk about DNS. I, I don't know if DNS looks up, look up as UDP or not. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think it is. I think so. I think so. Anyways, they were talking about doing uh, something exactly. with quick with DNS and doing that instead. All okay. right. Um, and then, yeah, some shout outs to libraries that are currently available right now. Um, there are many, many different quick libraries today. Um, the first one is MS Quick. It is one that's being developed by Microsoft. is written in C, um, and it's actually the one we're currently prototype, prototyping with. Um, we'll go into more detail about like some of the stuff we're doing with MS Quick a little bit later. Um, other ones include Quiche, which is another pun on the word. Well, it's a pun on Quick and Quiche and stuff like that. It's developed by Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare announced that they are using HTTP3 on both the client and server, I believe. Yep. Um, Google Quick. I don't really know what the name of it is. Um, I like the Facebook one though. Yeah. I was. I looked at that and I was like, "What is move?" Yeah. <laughs> it's. It's. It, you're supposed to say as move fast. Yeah. Um, and then they have a. They have a quick server as well. Yeah. Neco. Neco. I, I think that's Mozilla's version. Um, it's also written in Rust. Yeah. And there's again a ton of others. So I'll show you a quick interop matrix. It is. So, Quite a lot. I think this. So this, what this matrix is showing, and this is an illustrative thing for why we're talking about this as an experimental early prototyping kind of phase. Each column and row is an implementation, and the boxes are like how they work together. Yeah. So they don't even all work together to the same level. It's, yeah. it's it's this is a constantly evolving spec right now. Yeah, it's not even in full. Like the spec itself is constant is still in draft right yep. now. Yep. It's yeah, it's starting to settle down a good amount, but there's still problems that are being discussed and I think they may wait for v2 at this point but a lot of a lot of question marks still about the, the the actual like quality of implementation there's still a lot of nicks or uh, kinks that need to be worked out it's still early days in yeah. a lot of this stuff yeah yep exactly so uh, just some examples we have the Chrome project this is chromium slash quick this is what Chrome uses for um, HTTP3 quick support and I think this is another thing is like so Chrome does have support yep. for a version of quick today yep um, and I think it's one specifically Google's using on their servers and then they because yeah, they, they were really involved in developing this yeah um, but one of the things we'll show and actually I think we could probably jump towards that is we could show a demo of what we've got in yep. an initial prototype yep, using sure. Chrome to actually Make an HTTP three request to an ASP.NET yeah, Core server. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so if you want to just show that now, I let's start with that. Let's yeah, do that now. Let's, let's, there we go. I think. Oh yeah. I'll, oh yeah. We'll just do it now. And then we'll talk a little bit about yeah, what we're sure. gonna do. Sure. What our think thinking is All right, right now. All right. So I could show the startup class. Let me see if I can find it. And then we'll let you. We'll have you zoom in a bit yeah. when you find the file you there want. There we go. All right. Let's zoom in a little bit on the text there. Right. Yeah. A little All bit right. more. All right. Oh, it looks really small over there. Gosh. Yeah. All right. So. This is your normal program main. The only difference is that I'm calling an API that's called like use MS Quick. So what it's doing is this is effectively adding, um, just like we had, we have different transports in, in Kestrel. Um, effectively, you can call use sockets, use libuv. Um, this is just another transport that's implemented with this Bedrock API, um, allowing you to get a connection and get a stream out of that and stuff like that. So what we're doing is we're adding MS Quick as our ability to get a transport transport to send and receive bytes from. Um, after that, we're also listening on both uh, HTTP 1 and HTTP 2, as well as HTTP 3. Um, this one is a little bit hard-coded right now, but it should be okay. So now, if we control F5 and run this sample, hopefully, hopefully, when I refresh this page and this builds, we should be able to see HTTP 3 working. Even though I definitely have a bug that I need to fix, but... It's we, like, won't, we won't talk about the bug. Hopefully, yeah. we won't hit the bug. Yeah, hopefully, we won't hit it. <laughs> Okay, though. I if mean, you keep talking about it, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. happen. <laughs> like, it happened. Like, it was, I was running on my computer, and it like, didn't happen at all. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is happening. So, 
We're listening now. One He's, of the things, yeah, why are there two URLs there with this? Is it says the same port number, right? So it's really interesting. So you listening on both TCP and UDP are effectively count as different. Yeah, selections. they're different port spaces. Yeah. Like port 80 on TCP and port yeah. 80 on UDP are different. Uh -huh. So yeah. a lot of times when uh, this is specifically what Google's doing from what I can tell is when they have quick input in both on the client and the server, when they make a quick connection, they usually do it to the same 443 port that you normally would for right. like anything. So for, TCP, uh, for example, yeah. like if you go to youtube.com, you would sometimes see like the same request going to port 443, but it's using quick instead. So now let's hop So on. now because you're listening, you're doing HTTP 3 and mm -hmm. we're doing a, we're still listening with, with HTTP 2, mm -hmm. that's why you see those two yep. now listening. Our URLs haven't been updated, but it's saying I'm listening on TCP 5555 yep. and UDP 5555. Yep. And there we go. Hello world, HTTP 3. No wow. Ooh, so go. different. I know. It's really interesting. <laughs> um, so if we go to here and we refresh, we should be able to see. Um, you're not showing it. You got to right click oh. columns. Right click on the column and oh, I think you can bummer. do it. Uh, what type protocol. Is protocol h2 plus quick 99 so that is actually <laughs> HTTP 3 um so yeah google chrome reports HTTP 3 as this for whatever reason i don't really know um HTTP 2 plus quick eight, quick, quick quick 43 i think was the google's implementation yeah. of HTTP 3 slash quick it's kind of weird yeah so um, like the, and this is exactly it it doesn't say hp3 because even that's kind of a new idea calling it hp3 for a while it was just called http on quick and then yeah. they kind of decided well, let's just call it hp3 yep. let's just make it the next version yep so um do you want me to take a wireshark trace of this nah All i right. think that's good i think All yeah right. but we've got a bunch of so um one of the things i i think we should talk about is okay so what does this mean for dotnet core because yeah. like that was a great demo yeah. it's a bit hacked together like what does this actually mean and i think there's a the thing to remember about supporting something like HTTP three is there's a whole bunch of elements to it, right? Mm -hmm. There's getting it working in ASP.NET Core uh, on uh, on Kestrel. There's does it work in IIS? Does it work in HTTP Sys? These are our other servers. Mm -hmm. There's does it work with HTTP Client? Like yeah. can you make requests with HTTP Client? All of these things are on the table. They're things that we're like we're looking at. We're starting to explore. I think long term it is our goal to support these things in all of our our places. What we're working on right now is we're playing around with prototyping HTTP3 in Kestrel. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to try and implement quick because as Justin sort of mentioned, you're trying to implement reliability on top of UDP. That basically means re-implementing TCP and that's a hard problem. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why most operating systems do it for you. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so for so, example, like, yeah. uh, some of the micros, like the team that's writing MS Quick right now, it's like a team of seven or eight people and they've been working on it for about two two and a half years yeah and like that's been solely their job and like like we have engineering resources but implementing that is quite an ask especially for the kind of turnaround we would like like if yeah. we were to implement quick within a year it's not it's very it's risky. a lot of work um, yeah very security risky code right because you're also re-implementing like you you're it uses a lot of the same tls stuff the the how https works but mm -hmm you're having to re-implement it in a different way yeah. on top of Quick. Yeah, so there's, there's security implications, all this yeah. stuff. So so um, when Justin showed that code, you saw this use MS Quick uh, line. That's because what we're doing right now is prototyping with a library developed by Microsoft called MS Quick. Um, that library right now is not publicly released, but they're working on, on, on figuring that story out. Um, and uh, that what that library does is it lets us Hand, it handles the quick stuff for us. It lets us do, you know, it handles those streams and stuff. And then all we have to build on top of that is the HTTP3 stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of our approach right now. We're looking at that because that gives us that leg up. It means we don't have to start from ground zero. We can, yeah. you know, build up from something that already kind of works. Yeah. I remember Barry Dorrance walked up from my desk and was like, Justin, you are not implementing quick. Yeah. I will make sure. It's like you specifically. Yeah. I don't trust you. Well, yeah. I mean, he doesn't trust, even if we had like 10 devs developing it. If, like, like the benefits that we could potentially get of being able to write .NET code and then like having a little bit more performance context is kind of out is, is outweighed by the security implications and also the amount of time it takes. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things you're going to start, you are going to start to see in the next couple weeks is we're going to start checking in some of this code, some of this code that that uh, implements HTTP3. So if you're following the ASP.NET Core repo, you're going to start seeing HTTP3 stuff come up. The context I want to set on this is 
It's still super experimental. Think mm -hmm. Blazor way back in the early days. And not even that. Like, we don't even know exactly where we're going with this. Because, like I said, the spec isn't even done. The, it's, they're still discussing this. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, but you'll start seeing that stuff. We're, because we're using this MS Quick library, mm -hmm. those HP3 bits we start checking in early on are not going to work right away because mm -hmm. you're going to need that library, and we haven't figured out how we're going to deal with that right now. Yeah. Um, but long term, our plan is to, de de to, to produce some HTTP3 scenarios and get them out in a version of .NET Core that's full open source. Yep. You can contribute. You can build everything, you know. Mm -hmm. It follows our, our usual patterns. But right now, we're, we're sort of in that early prototyping. And basically what it comes down to is Justin's tired of having a private yeah. uh, fork of the code. And he wants <laughs> yeah. to get it out of that private yeah. fork of the code. Yeah. And, and we're tired of it, too. We've only been... It's only been going for a couple weeks, but, like, we want to make sure that... Uh, that our custom, that our community can see what we're doing, um, yeah. because that's really important to our open source. Even if what we're doing is still building on these components that are a little harder to to access, I think it's important that what we're doing be public. Yep, um, exactly. So, John, I saw a bunch of good questions. You want to go yeah. through some of those? Yeah, and I've I've heard my um, I may be buffering a bit here, so feel free to jump in if. All right. Not do you have to scroll that screen at all? I do. Yeah, if you can scroll, if you can scroll, well, I was thinking you can scroll. No, that's fine. Oh, I was trying yeah. to see. Well, I can't see half the good comments. That's the problem I saw. Yeah, our chat well, window doesn't scroll as easily. Yeah. Okay, so there's one from Michael Powell uh, with architectural from connection oriented to what does that impact request response, sender, receiver, listener role kind of questions. The the roles are very similar. Like, so it's still Quick is a connection oriented protocol. It's the same just because it's implemented at the top of UDP. It's still connection oriented mm -hmm. um, because when you look at it. IP, which is what all of this is based on, is also not connection-based. It's just sending packets. Um, and so Quick is, you, you can think of Quick as implementing TCP on top of UDP, but doing it in this like multi-stream way. Mm -hmm. um, so you still have a listener, and the listener accepts new connections. Um, and you have connectors that, you know, you have clients that connect to, to the listeners. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are some quirky things about Quick, huh? quirky Quick, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, like, Quick supports a feature called connection migration, which is, so in a TCP connection, you the connection is defined by the two IP addresses and ports on either side, right? And the local address and the remote address, the, and you can't change that. So if you go in a tunnel and you lose your, and you lose your internet, your 3G connection, so you mm -hmm. connect to the local Wi-Fi, that TCP connection is gone because it's a, you have a whole new IP address, you're a whole mm -hmm. new thing. Mm -hmm. In Quick, the connection is not coupled to a specific address. So you can actually migrate that connection so that when you go into that tunnel and you go on and you, you know, you're on your bus with Wi-Fi or something and you connect to the, the Wi-Fi on the bus, you, your TCP connection, your, your quick connections are not dropped. They just continue as is. Yeah. And I remember seeing another question. It was about like, what are the big benefits of HTTP3? And so that was one of them. Right. You know, the connection migration. Um, the other one is connection establishment time. Like the, the time it takes to establish connection is like, especially a secure connection is significantly less. Um, also, this headline blocking problem with uh, TCP and being solved by UDP is like probably the biggest one. I would say that's the one I like. You know, if you're like lead, reading like, oh, why are we getting rid of HTTP? That's probably the biggest reason. Um, and then yeah, after that, like it probably is going to be more performant. That's the probably the biggest question that like is on people's minds. One of the like, interesting things you get out of moving to UDP as a base, and is this can be good and this can be bad. It's just different. It's, yeah. It is the way to look at it. Is Today, TCP is implemented entirely in the operating system kernel, right? It does all the work and sends you the data. Um, UDP is as well, but UDP is pretty simple. Like, that's very low logic. But TCP has buffering and flow control and all this stuff, and you can't touch that code in the kernel because it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. highly got to be highly compatible and all these things. Quick, because it's implemented on top of UDP, Quick is implemented in... So when, you, when Justin ran that code... All of the quick code was running in his process, mm -hmm. in user mode, not in the kernel. Now, he was running for this DLL that we were using, so he didn't write it, but it can iterate more quickly. It's not tied to your OS version. It's mm -hmm. it's more flexible that way. It's like app local in this, you know, uh, in that way. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, I, uh, I've seen a couple questions uh, and on a similar theme, which is uh, around platform support. Yeah. Um, so first off, the, the question is, since this is built on MS Quick, does that mean Windows only? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a good reason it's called MS Quick and not something like WinQuick. Um, our understanding is the plan is to take that cross-platform. So the, the thing I want to put out clearly is that we are committed to building a cross-platform Quick 
uh, implementate like quick support in mm -hmm. HTTP3. We're still looking exactly what that means and how that works. We're working with the MS Quick team to help mm -hmm. them sort of understand what we need and, and what we can do. But but they plan to be cross-platform yeah, as well. So and the thing that like I just want to remind our customers is like fundamentally like if we can't deliver on the fact that if MS Quick decides only to run on Windows, for example, like we will pivot and find a new Quick library yeah, to we, use we, instead. We, yeah. Like we're gonna we're we're trying to promise everybody that we're gonna deliver a cross-platform like great experience with HTTP three. And until we get to that point, we're not gonna ship it really. And then and at that point, like we're gonna make sure it's cross-platform. So if MS Quick only runs on Windows, which from I could tell it's not, it's gonna run on uh, a bunch of, yeah. yeah, a bunch of other platforms. Um, we should be in a good spot. But again, that's very important to us. Yeah. All right. Um, I think this yeah, this is oops, do you mind switching back to my computer? Yes. If I remember which yeah. HDMI it is. Let's try this one. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, and this is I kind of kind of went over this. So this is generally just like we have Bedrock in Kestrel, so we're gonna develop a package. It's called like Microsoft ASP.NET Quick Connections dot Quick dot whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's gonna be our Bedrock component that allows us to get something called a connection context. I would say, um, connection context represents pretty much just an input and output um, for your. Uh, connection. So, and like the other transports we have right now that are like this, instead of transports.quick, we've also got transports.sockets, yep. transports.libuv. These yep. are the things that implement the raw bytes going back and forth on the wire. Yep. Yeah. It's a little bit interesting with quick because most of the work you want to do are actually on streams. The connection is just kind of like a facade. Right. You can't like, send data on the stream, yeah. right? You have to create, or on the, on the connection. You can't send data on the connection. You have to yeah. create a stream to do it. Yeah. So we may need to work with Bedrock in order to figure out the right level of abstraction because we really haven't had this like multiplex, like we want streams instead of connections kind of idea. Um, so we just need to figure out those problems. Um, and then I just mentioned quickly that we have uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Kestrel um, that's going to be implementing HTTP3. And then, you know, we'll see what we do with other things like SignalR or gRPC. We don't really know yet, but um, I'm going to show you a quick uh, a demo about uh, SignalR using Quick. Now, let's see if this actually works, because that is something I have so, to and, and And so, da you, while you set this up, so, like, David, I remember, I think, I don't know if he showed it on a stand-up, but he's definitely talked about it before. A while ago, he he liked to show this sample of SignalR running directly over a raw TCP connection, mm -hmm. um, and that's because sig the way SignalR is layered, the actual messages that go back and forth, your hub invocations and things like that, we send them down a WebSocket or we send them through long polling or through service end events. Mm -hmm. But that's layered like that's just one of the transports. Mm -hmm. If you want, you could run it directly on top of TCP. Yep. Um, and so Justin and and David got together and kind of said, well, okay, we just built this quick thing. Yeah. And here's the thing. SignalR, imagine, you can imagine each invocation could get its own stream. You could have long running requests. We have streaming support in SignalR, which lets you send mm -hmm. multiple messages. Um, but it has this head of line blocking problem where if yep. you have a really busy stream, it can block other things. And if with quick, you could get some of that raw yeah. power right out of it. So as Andrew was doing that, I actually started the demo and ran it. Um, so pretty much this is just an echo server, but it's using SignalR. Um, it is sending uh, whatever text you write on the screen, and then it's responding back. So I can show some. It's another one of those. It still works. Yeah, demos it still works. <laughs> because like, Whoa. Um, because there's not, uh, you know, there's not a lot that's different out of the, the yeah. user experience. Which, which I think. Okay, someone just asked to Wireshark it, Justin. Oh my god. Wireshark uh, it. Wireshark uh, it. All right. So let's. Start. Unfortunately, one thing we're going to see. He's going to set this up because. Quick is always secure. You're going to see a bunch of Wireshark, and it's going to be a bunch of encrypted content. Yeah. Um, but you will see that there are quick messages coming mm -hmm. in. Um, but uh, you won't see the content of them, and uh, because Wireshark's uh, decryption logic doesn't work with Quick either. Yeah. Um, um, all right, so we have UDP. It looks like it's. I, did you saw, run it? Yeah. No, you're on the. You're on the. Am I on the right? So yeah, go capture stop. Uh, go to capture. Capture. Go to options. options. Let's make sure you're on the right one. Yeah. You want the loop back. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's coming out as UDP. It was coming out as quick earlier. I downloaded a new version of Wireshark, so maybe that affected it. But these are yeah, you're showing these are showing UDP packets. They should be quick though. Do a start the capture again and run the demo real quick. Yeah, sure. Saving and then stop and let's restart the processes just to make sure. We'll see. Again, we'll start up the sample, the client. You started the server. Yeah, this starts both the client. And the oh, server. nice, nice. Yeah, I think 
should start the server. Yep, so there's their echoing. Right, so now let's go here. And oh yeah, there he goes. Quick. There you go. Yeah. I saw it quick. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I don't know why showing was easy so, yeah. later, but yeah. Quick. There, we have satisfied we satisfied the community yeah, demands for one. for proof. I know, yeah. I was gonna say no one's gonna if you if I didn't show quick at all. Yeah. yeah, so I wasn't I there may be a way to get uh raw data out of the quick connection we weren't yeah you can get some of the data out but a lot of um, the pay you notice if you actually like click on that and yeah. then double and then open that up you can see it says like protected payload and it's like there's a bunch yeah. of garbage because it's all encrypted yeah um but yeah you can kind of see that but um but yeah so like this is sort of an experiment we're moving down um there's just i just posted this morning i posted an announcement to the yeah. ASP.NET announcements repo sort of helping set the context on this as well um and this is kind of our you know, it's our explorations. We're trying to look at, we're trying to see what comes out of this early on because we don't know what it's going to be and how long it's going to take, but we want to start talking about it in public because that's what we do. We yeah. we, we try to do our stuff open source yes. uh, and, and in public as much as we can. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I think I haven't, seen, I don't know, John, do you have any other questions coming through that you've caught? Uh, let me take another look here. Right. Feel free to send your questions out if you want. We still can answer yeah. some so of those. So one thing to know is that we're going to be putting all this code open source. Community members will not be able to run HTTP 3 Because yet. of the MS Quick because library we're using right now. Yeah. We're still trying to figure out a bunch of nuanced things right uh, we, is, we expect that to be pretty temporary. Yeah. Like we're, This is just like a... I want to make sure that people, when they go and they clone the repo mm -hmm. and they try to use this HTTP 3 stuff, mm -hmm. they understand why we're not... It doesn't quite work yet, but um, but yeah. And actually, Justin, so, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm guessing you probably can answer this, but it's a MS Quick library. I'm curious where else at Microsoft if there's any other announced Quick usage. So, or... I mean, the, the MS Quick library is developed out of the sort of same team. My understanding is the same team that builds things like HTTP Sys, mm -hmm. the HTTP implementation inside yeah. Windows. So HTTP3 support in Windows and IIS yeah. and HTTP Sys, this is also, I talked about yeah. all our servers. This was in Kestrel. Um, my understanding is that's something that is on their radar that yeah, they're working on. I think um, it's actually public, the fact that they're, they have a server open right now. I don't know where it is, but it's with IIS and they're running HTTP3 on it. Um, they have one uh, also with, uh, with or with Quick as well, and that's using MS Quick underneath it. So yeah, so like for so when we're talking about this, we're talking about implementing this in Kestrel. In order mm -hmm. to get support for this in IIS or an HP Sys server, you're going to need to run whatever Windows version has that functionality something. when that rolls yeah, out. Like and MS Quick is the MS Quick is the library that's being developed for that purpose. It's yeah. for common code to be used mm -hmm. for Quick across uh, not just the company but also. Uh, you know, they're looking at, at moving it out into the community yeah. as well. And I know that there are some teams at Microsoft that have started using or have used MS Quick in the past. I can't remember them, honestly, but there's a good number of teams. So. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. This is, I mean, <laughs> you. I think you went through in such an organized way and presented everything. I, I think you, it feels like you've answered the questions here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Think of something. Yeah, so we got yeah. one more slide. Um, it's really like, what are the, so this is all nice and shiny. Like, what are the big problems with Quick and HTTP3? And uh, one of this is that people don't believe UDP is a great model. Um, <laughs> I would say, I would say this, like a lot of companies and a lot of routers and a lot of network equipment kind of blocks UDP by default. Um, and we kind of believe that it's going to change over the future, that people will realize, oh, Quick is a protocol. We need to start allowing UDP again. But a lot of people did it for security reasons. They didn't want to accept any UDP traffic at all, except for yeah, like I mean, one of the minutes. things one of the things I was thinking of just now is like when you go into your Azure VM or something and you set up your Azure Firewall rules and you turn it to say, I want to allow HTTP, it allows TCP port 80 through. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not going to work with Quick because yeah. you got to allow UDP port 80. So, I, I mean, I think a lot of this is also, you know, there's going to be situ it's early on in this process there's going to be situations where quick is not going to work and and fortunately it's been designed with these ways so that um you know the server and the client can both kind of try to use quick when they and hp3 when they can and fall back to hp2 and fall back to hp1 like all these things have this mm -hmm. model 
um, to let you do that. I yeah. think that. Yeah, but but, sure. but so, it's definitely still a question mark of like, is UDP the right choice for this? This is yeah. why it's still a draft spec. It's yeah. why, yeah. I mean, I, the question, most likely UDP will be it because there's been so much, so many problems with implementing or adding new protocols. It's like there's only TCP and UDP. Like there was ideas of like adding like S, some, something else that was similar yeah. to this, but they didn't solve all the problems. Um, really to no success. They People have tried and there's been no success. It's just TCP and UDP, honestly. Um, another thing people are concerned about is that UDP is like not a very common scenario. So the performance within kernels uh, is not great. Um, yeah. And I've, Maybe, I've heard yeah. Windows is not, that doesn't have great UDP performance, but I really, I, I just heard that from Well, a, and it's tricky too, because of course UDP will always seem somewhat faster than TCP because yeah. it's dealing, you know, it's not doing all that buffering, flow control, all that mm -hmm. stuff. But but if it came down to it, like it's also not as common a scenario because yep. everything runs on TCP. Yep. Almost everything runs on TCP. Yeah. I'm sure there are plenty of people watching right now who have used UDP for stuff, but like the vast majority of things uh, use TCP. So mm -hmm. it just doesn't get the same attention. But it will now, to say, yeah. probably. Hopefully, we'll, that's we'll the idea. Um, and then finally, like people have been saying, it's not a big enough improvement over HTTP two. Um, yeah, performance wise, yeah. like what was the RPS of it? We haven't gotten to the point where we're measuring perf on our side, yeah. but it's gonna be critical to make sure that HTTP three is competitive with HTTP two, if not better. Yeah. Um, and if it's not that case, then then what's the point of even supporting it? There's other benefits you get out of HTTP three, but um, it, it, we really would like to make sure the performance or the RPS is uh, comparable. And that kind of gets into this experimental thing because we have to figure out how much it's gonna cost us to build this, as in like how much time and energy and like effort is it gonna cost to build it? And then we gotta weigh that with the benefit, which is what's the value? If this is only useful for the Googles of the world, the Microsoft, uh, you know, the Azures of the world, yeah. like maybe it, it changes the equation a little bit. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I saw one question go by, which was like, what is the actual benefit to developers of this? Yeah. And yeah. The answer is like performance, yeah. mostly. Yeah. Um, and. The reality is if you're happy with your performance in HTTP2, that's not as exciting. I yeah. mean, it, it's it's definitely nice to be faster. It's always nice to be yeah. faster, but like um, it has that sort of performance mm -hmm. uh, is the core thing. And so if we can deliver it with the right transfer performance, that's nice. Yeah, but... I think th this is a feature that we believe is not something that people are going to notice immediately, nor is it something that people necessarily want. Um, but down the line, we believe it's going to be really beneficial to anyone who's hosting a website. I mean, and it's a lot like HTTP2. Like, HTTP2 adds some little bits of functionality. You've got push promises, which mm -hmm. most servers don't even really implement no. fully, and you've got some things. But, like, the major benefit is it's a performance thing, and you can just you just throw a switch to say, well, turn HTTP2 on as well, and hopefully some people get faster connections. Exactly. Um um, I, you know, I feel like the performance side to it, there's multiple aspects to performance a lot of time right. too. So mm -hmm. one is what, you know, okay, my, I hit a website, I get something faster. That's great. But also scale, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's more efficient on the server, I can serve more requests with less resources, right. pay less money, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. I remember seeing a graph come from some of the MS quick folks and they said that they, they were seeing comparable performance between HTTP one and HTTP, or sorry, HTTP two and HTTP three with regards to connection uh, connection opening when there was a very low number of work on the machine. Mm. But once it got to a much higher scale, it became very clear that like Quick was allowing connections to get through way quicker. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. Uh, gosh. Let me see. Uh, yeah. There were some other questions. There was one. Um, jumping back and forth between Twitch and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Laser Mr. Magoo says, will allow for migration, will allow for simultaneous streams over different connections. So it won't allow, sim I mean, you can have multiple connections, but over the course of the, mig so, so the Quick is designed for this connection migration. And, and while you're migrating, it is set up to allow your concurrent requests to continue going mm -hmm. as much as possible while you migrate from one address to the other. Of course, messages you sent before, right as you went into the tunnel won't arrive, but when you do reestablish the the new connection, it will retransmit them, and it will just act like a dropped packet, basically. Yeah. So with HTTP two and HTTP three, like it's very normal for like browsers or you know whatever client you have to only create one connection from the client to the server. Um, with HTTP one, it was I think you had to create like, like five yeah, at you once, like yeah, five at once in order to make sure that you didn't and, have this multiplexing problem. And that was their way of doing the streaming, basically, yeah. was they had five TCP connections instead of, and that's how you did. 
you could send five parallel requests. Yeah, and fundamentally, connections are more expensive than streams. Right. That's, that's the big thing. It's like having five active TCP connections are, is way more expensive to both the client and the server than just having one. Yeah. And, and because you can multiplex it, you should not have to worry about hitting this blocking issue. So typically, it's just one from one uh, one connection from the client to the server, and then during this reaching admission phase, it may be two. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, is that little as it's migrating over? But yeah, yeah, exactly. It's still one. It's still considered one quick connection. It's yeah. just the what they basically did is they kind of virtualize it over. Like this is what you do when you want to make this thing work. They made the connection a concept. It's not real. Connection is just an idea, man. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you, and, and 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 then the actual physical UDP because UDP doesn't even have connections. The actual physical packets that's just one one instance of the physical transport, and the rest is kind of more virtual over top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question from John: So, will HTTP one one and two o connections be slower if we're defaulting or trying HTTP three first? No, no, so the migration isn't based on the migration is based on like you do HTTP one or HTTP two. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, we could talk a little bit yeah. about like what's the pattern. So, let's imagine you're a browser. Just pretend that you're a browser for a second. <laughs> Probably Chromium because everything's Chromium now. <laughs> um, uh, the first thing you'll do is you'll open a TCP connection to port eighty, and you'll say you'll do because uh, the user put HTTPS in their address bar because everybody should put HTTPS in their address bar. Mm -hmm. It'll do the TLS handshake. So, T and part of TLS is this new extension called ALPN, Al Application yeah. Protocol Me Negotiation, yeah. Application Layer Protocol, Protocol Negotiation. negotiation. Yeah. And basically, it's a way of during TLS, TLS, TLS <laughs> negotiation, you say, I want to talk HTTP2 or I want to talk HTTP1. Yep. And that is uh, the part where uh, you decide whether you're doing HTTP 1 or HTTP 2. Great. Yeah. Okay. So that's what happens today when you connect to, mm -hmm. to websites that support HTTP 2. Cool. Obviously, that only that doesn't work for UDP because it's a whole different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But you now make your first request and you say, okay, get me the main page. Mm -hmm. And in the response that comes back from the server, there's basically a header. And the header says, by the way, here's your data. But by the way, I support HTTP 3 and here's where I support it. And you can trust this data that I'm telling you for x x seconds. Like it's a yeah. it's a caching thing. So you say, hey, by the way, I support HTTP three. It's on port eighty, and cache that for a year yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then the browser will cache it, and the next time you connect to that URL, it will say, well, I don't even need to do the TCP connection. Yeah. I'll go straight to the UDP connection. Mm -hmm. um, so they have the, the. I think this is a good observation that like. Well, if I'm going to try quick first, that's going to be annoying. Well, yeah. okay, it, that's why you do this kind of light up. You upgrade. Yeah. You upgrade your way forward into the the new yeah. ways. And I also believe that sometimes Chrome makes multiple requests in so parallel. In yeah. parallel. So yeah. if, if it has knowledge that there is a quick, uh, quick endpoint, it still will try to do both a TCP and a UDP one and see which one comes back first. Because right. it ends up being that the quick one is. Uh, slower for whatever reason, who knows? Maybe there's well, and that's the other thing is because it's TCP and UDP are very are often very like separated systems in in the operating system and in mm -hmm. sockets. You can just sort of like try both. Yep. Um, yeah. And at that point, it would know which one's faster, and then it can make continue. And and I think you know, and certainly browsers have to be careful about doing that, and making sure they're only doing GET requests because obviously, if they send your by by widgets request twice down the thing, that's going to get yeah. complicated. But they, they do that kind of thing. When they know that it's a safe request to to send, they, they just say, well, what if I just send both and yeah. see which comes back first? Yep. People are just speculating about different things that you could do. <laughs> like, could you load part of the page and then load more on scroll? Well, or Yeah. I mean, you can just do that with different, like, I mean, it's kind of just a web tactic in general. Yeah. So, you know, they have the whole, like, like the classic demo with HTTP2 is like you have a big photo and you split the photo up into like 16 pieces, like four by four yeah. grid, and then you show like loading with HTTP1, it's, it's like super chum, slow, chum, chum, and then with HTTP2, it's really quick because like, everything goes at the same time. Yeah. Um, I think the same thing can apply to different parts of your web page. Like yeah. if you want to load like content at the bottom of the page, you can just wait to do it until. I think it's more of a, a client side like decision to do anyway. So. Yeah, and I think I mean the, this is the thing about when we talk about performance on the client side. HP2 and HP3, the biggest thing it, I think the bigger thing it does over like, if you think about performance as just how fast can the bytes get down to my to my client, then it could be a toss up depending on how well it's designed. But with HP1, if you request that web page and it has to download 20 different images, 
50 JavaScript components and a bunch of CSS and you haven't minified, you haven't done all that stuff because you just, you, you don't care. Like <laughs> this is what we did in HTTP 1. We minified and we merged and yeah. we brought it down to one. In HTTP 2 and, and even more so in HTTP 3, because of the parallelism that's there, even though it may not be faster to get each one of those requests completed, they're all happening at once. Um, so you don't have to like, I'm not going to go as far as to say you don't have to bundle and minify with HTTP 3 or HTTP 2, but it, it, it is a different, you're making a different consideration at that point. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you may not need to bundle or minify because you're just going to download them in parallel. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, Trushinator asks if, how to disable HTTP 3. That will be decided in the future. There will be a way to disable it. Way to I, we always to have options yeah. for that stuff. Yeah. yeah, there will be a way to disable it. I, I assume that- We don't even know how we're going to enable it yet. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> but yeah, there'll be <laughs> options. There are some interesting decisions we made with how we enable or lit up uh, HTTP 2 support. We'll have to figure out. Yeah, because like in, in 2.2, we shipped uh, HTTP 2 support, but it was off by default. In 3.0, it's on by default, but you can turn it off again if you don't like it. Yeah. If you want to be slow yeah. and not quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so most likely we wouldn't make HTTP 3 on by default For a little, yeah. in a minor version. It probably would be in a major version. That major version I am uncertain of. Yeah, yeah. Because the amount of work, there's a lot of work to do still. Um, we don't know what necessarily is the bar for us to wanting the ship that says like uh, fully supported. Um, but I'll tell you this, like I probably will be working on this pretty much dedicated for at least a while. So. Yeah, and I it's know a focus for And now. I know there's yeah. people on the .NET side that are very interested in this. Well, I'm trying to figure out a complete story across all of .NET. Yeah, the side we haven't talked about yet, and uh, is is well, what about HP client? Because this is great if I can get it from the server. But like, and Chromium supports it, so that's cool. I got my Edge and I got my Google Chrome, and Firefox is working on it. Every, yeah. All the browsers are doing it. But what do I do if I want to do service to service communication using HP three? That was my next yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Um, and. The most I'll say there is like that's on the table. We're looking at that. Like I, I think you, we definitely have support for it in HTTP client as we go forward. Again, same same sort of caveat I'm putting here, which is that this is all very experimental. We're playing mm -hmm. with stuff. We want to show you the stuff that we're doing early on, so that you can see how it gets made and how we work on yeah. this stuff. But. Well, so and you've you've presented you know your early thoughts on this and there's the announcement repo with a link to discussion right so mm -hmm. that's where people can talk about yep. their use cases or whatever yep. so. yeah yeah and so one of the things if you go to that announcement there's another link to an issue on ASP.NET Core this is what I we this is an epic this is kind of you know people who do agile planning know kind of what an epic is it's basically our big roll up item of like the things we want to do <laughs> Wow. Right now, I put like I put like three things here this morning. Like we're we're still this is you know it's still a lot of speculation on like what are, exactly do we need to build, but um, we'll start kind of adding that in and and like keep fleshing this out and expanding it and mm -hmm. making it uh, get a clearer picture of how it goes. But the but you know we're gonna start checking code in. Just because there's code there doesn't mean we know exactly when we're going to ship it. Yep. We're going to keep coming back, talking about it more often. When we have more ideas, we're going to blog about it. We're going to put announcements up. We're going to talk on the stand up. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to talk more as we get more idea of the of where these are going to land. But yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, well, it's it's been just over an hour, so it's probably mm -hmm. a good spot to wrap up here. Yeah. So thank you very much. Of course, uh, we'll have to get you back in as things. Get more shaped yep. up, and mm -hmm. you wanna so, the button? Yep. Yeah, and then I'll get your uh, I'll get those links from you so that we can add those into the link roll up that I sent out earlier. Yeah, that'd be great. great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, cool. thank you for having us on, John. It was a blast. Yeah, yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Cool. Okay. Do we do, do we do a dramatic zoom out anymore? No. Do we? No. What? Oh my gosh. Slowly. Slowly I remember as an intern. Back. I messed it up duck as an down. intern. Just like duck down. <laughs> I had away. All right. Thank you. All right. it. Thank you, community. Uh, I really appreciate you. Yeah, there's there is a button that yeah. you hit. It's I, like, I I do have the button, the the big okay. like end everything button. Yeah. All right. Two. Bye. One. Goodbye.